Yeah! Now, do it again. Give me that. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Okay, let's do it again from You're Not Hardcore. One, two, three. Well, you're not hardcore. Unless you live hardcore. And the legend of the rich was way hardcore. Yeah! Now we're rocking. I am so excited about today's lesson because if you're like me, then you have watched School of Rock over 100 times. It's an absolute classic, so get ready to learn American slang, idioms, and connected speech as Dewey Finn, played by the incredible Jack Black, turns an ordinary elementary school into a kick-ass rock and roll elementary school. So to continue learning with us so that you can understand your favorite TV series and movies without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. In fact, that's just what Anthony did, and he says that our lessons are easy to understand, informative, and entertaining. Okay, let's talk about School of Rock. How does Dewey, Jack Black's character, end up working as a substitute teacher at a school? We'll see that shortly. One thing we know is that he's broke and desperate for money. This is useless, all right? You tell him that if he doesn't come up with the rent by the end of the week, he's out of here. Dewey, I'm not paying your share of the rent, so I don't know. I mean, maybe you should sell one of your guitars or something. What? Would you tell Picasso to sell his guitars? Oh my God, he's an idiot. But right when he was considering selling his instruments, he gets an opportunity. Hi, my name's Rosalie Mullins. Um, I'm the principal here at Horace Green Prep, and we're having a little emergency here. One of our teachers broke her leg on the way to school this morning, and all of our subs are already working. Pat Wickham at Milton Prep recommended I give Mr. Schneebly a call. Do you know if he's available? Um, how long is the gig? Excuse me? Uh, how long is the job? My guess is as much as a few weeks, but we do need somebody to start immediately. Mm-hmm, so how much are we talking here? We pay our substitutes six fifty dollars a week. Now, do you know when Mr. Schneebly will be back? Hold on a sec. Oh, you know what? I think he's just coming in right now. Ned, phone! Hello, this is Ned Schneebly. Okay, Freddy, that was awesome. You're rocking, but it's a little sloppy Joe. Tighten up the screws, okay? Zach, dude, <laughs> what's up with the stiffness, man? You're looking a little robotronic, okay? Let's uh, grease up the hinges and listen. Loosey goosey, baby. Loosey goosey. I'm just playing it the way you told me. I know, and you know what? It's perfect. But the thing is, rock is about the passion, man. Where's the joy? You're the lead guitarist, and we are counting on you for some style, brother. So try this out. This is an ancient technique. It's called power stance. That's it, power stance. You own the universe. Now give me an E chord. Just go But let me hear Yeah, now raise your goblet of rock. It's a toast to those who rock. Now smile and nod your head and let me see your eyeballs wide like there's something wrong. Yeah! Now, do it again. Give me that. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Okay, let's do it again from You're Not Hardcore. One, two, three. Well, you're not hardcore. No, you're not hardcore. Unless you live hardcore. Unless you live hardcore. And the legend of the rich was way hardcore. We're rocking.
this is useless, all right? You tell him that if he doesn't come up with the rent by the end of the week, he's out of here. Generally, when we use the expression to come up with something, we mean to think of an idea, answer, excuse, etc. For example, is that the best excuse you can come up with? In this context, however, the collocation is to come up with some money. As you can guess, it means to produce a certain amount of money. Dewey needs to come up with the cash to pay his share of the rent. Dewey, I'm not paying your share of the rent, so... Share here is used to mean the amount of money Dewey is responsible for paying, which, as we know, he's not paying. He's mooching off his friend, which means he's basically living in the apartment for free. Sounds great, right? <laughs> Dude, I've been mooching off you for years, and it's never been a problem until she showed up. Just dump her, man. Yeah, well, if you don't come up with some money, she's gonna dump me. One of our teachers broke her leg on the way to school this morning, and all of our subs are already working. Pat Wickham at Milton Prep recommended I give Mr. Schneebly a call. Do you know if he's available? Um... Uh... How long is the gig? Excuse me? This is when Dewey gets an opportunity to come up with his share of the rent, which is by working as a substitute teacher or a sub in a school. The substitute teacher is the teacher who steps in for or temporarily replaces the main teacher. Now this conversation is really funny because of the contrast in their way of speaking. She speaks formally, and he doesn't show a care in the world about choosing his words. And if you're interested in learning more about colloquial language that us natives use every day, then I want you to try out our three-part free Fluent With Friends Masterclass. To sign up today and get started, you can click up here, and I'll also leave it linked in the description below. Uh, how long is the gig? Excuse me? A gig is what musicians and comedians call a performance. For example, the band is doing a gig in New Jersey next week. A gig is also what you can call an informal job that you do for a short period of time. Here, it is hilarious that he refers to being a sub-teacher as a gig. It suits his rock and roll personality perfectly. I'm just so excited about this gig, sir. I mean, what a, what a sweet gig. I've got a gig. Yeah, you're saying gig a lot. Oh, so sorry, I haven't worked in a while. My last real job was an ad for Rick Lazio's New York Senate campaign. Um, how long is the gig? Excuse me? She replies, excuse me? To give him a chance to ask that question more appropriately. So he then corrects himself, saying job. Uh, how long is the job? My guess is as much as a few weeks, but we do need somebody to start immediately. Mm-hmm, so how much are we talking here? By how much are we talking here, he wants to know how much money the substitute teacher is going to be paid. But once again, this is not the best way to ask this question. This is, however, an interesting expression that we use with numbers to say how much something will cost or how much something will take. How much are we talking about, literally? How does 24,000 gallons sound? Cause you're not hardcore. No, you're not hardcore. Unless you live hardcore. Unless you live hardcore. Hardcore can be used with different words to mean extreme. You might be a hardcore rock fan, which means you're highly committed to rock as a fan. Other people, however, do like rock, but are more casual listeners. That is so badass. Just... So hardcore. Yeah, very cool. Real power move. Yeah. Then, when they sing live hardcore, they mean having an extreme way of life or an extreme belief that is very unlikely to change. You're rocking, but it's a little sloppy Joe. Tighten up the screws, okay? We use the word rock to give a compliment to someone. If we say someone rocks, we mean they're awesome or that they do something really well. Aussie rocks! Woo! Yeah! Yes! It certainly does rock. So, this is what Dewey is saying to this kid. But he could also mean this more literally, to say that he's playing rock music really well. Then he says it's a bit sloppy joe. A sloppy joe is a sandwich with a filling of ground beef that has been seasoned with a sauce of tomatoes and spices. However, 
He's basically saying that the way he's playing the drums is sloppy, which means he's playing a little messy and not carefully. What about Leslie Winkle? Oh, no. <laughs> Why? Her research methodology is sloppy, she's unjustifiably arrogant about loop quantum gravity, and to make matters worse, she's often mean to me. Tighten up the screws, okay? Here, he's basically saying that he should focus more and play better than what he is. As an adjective, tight means firm, the opposite of loose. We turn this adjective into a verb by adding en at the end, tighten. Then we add up, tighten up, to add more emphasis. Okay, tighten up, tighten up. Up here, ladies. Beautiful, one more, gals. Zach, dude, <laughs> what's up with the stiffness, man? You're looking a little robotronic. We use what's up with, or simply what's with, to ask the reason for something. Next to him, I'm like one of those sign language gorillas who knows how to ask for grapes. <laughs> so my question is, what's up with that? If someone is stiff or has stiffness in their movements, they don't move very freely. Here, Dewey is saying that he should move or dance a little bit more. Let's uh, grease up the hinges and listen. Loosey goosey, baby. Loosey goosey. Grease is a thick, oily substance that is put on the moving parts of a car, machine, etc. to make it run or move smoothly. When we use this as a verb, we say it as grease up. Literally speaking, a hinge is this object you can see here that attaches to a door. However, here he is referring to his joints, again, to say that he should move more, or be more loosey-goosey. As we saw before, loose is the opposite of tight, or stiff. He might say he needs to loosen up. Yeah, come on, man. Just loosen up, baby, loosen up. Come on, at you. Where's the joy? You're the lead guitarist, and we are counting on you for some style, brother! Lead in this case means main. We often say lead singer or lead guitarist in a band that has more than one singer or guitarist. As the lead guitarist, he's supposed to show style. Brother here means brother. If you call someone brother or bro, it means that you have a close and friendly relationship with that person. Normally a best or a very good friend. Note that it is very informal. To count on someone means to depend on someone or something. Just don't burn the place down. You can count on me, sir. Happy Thanksgiving. This is an ancient technique. It's called power stance. Your stance is the position in which you stand. In karate, or fighting in general, this is a fight stance. In American football, this is a defensive stance. A power stance is a way you stand that shows you're confident. This term commonly refers to people standing with their feet wide apart. Another common way in which we use the word stance is to refer to an option or position we have on a certain issue. For example, he has a strong stance against gun possession. But let me hear. Uh, uh, yeah, now raise your goblet of rock. It's a toast to those who rock. A goblet is a cup made of glass or metal, with a base and a stem, but no handle. He's pretending his pick, which is this small object guitarists use to play, is a goblet. He then proposes a toast. When you toast, you drink a glass of wine or another beverage to thank someone, honor someone, wish someone luck, or celebrate something. All right, I'd like to propose a toast. A little toast here. Ding, ding, ding. I know this isn't exactly the kind of Thanksgiving that all of you plan, but for me, this has been really great, you know? Now smile and nod your head and let me see your eyeballs wide like there's something wrong, yeah! To nod is to move your head up and down in order to show agreement or understanding. Rock fans also nod their heads when they listen to a song they like. Now, do it again, give me that. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. There's some interesting connected speech in this sentence. But first, let's see what the expression, that's what I'm talking about, means. So we say this when we want to express enthusiastic support for something. Did you also notice the linking and reduction? So say, that's what I'm quick, like, that's what I'm. Then he drops the G and connects it to about. 
talking about. All together, that's what I'm talking about. Alrighty, are you ready to test your knowledge? You're going to watch the scenes again without subtitles and answer a few quiz questions. I want you to focus on the words and phrases you have learned in this lesson. If you need to watch it again two or three times to fully understand, that's okay. Are you ready? Let's go. This is useless, all right? You tell him that if he doesn't come up with the rent by the end of the week, he's out of here. Dewey, I'm not paying your share of the rent, so I don't know. I mean, maybe you should sell one of your guitars or something. What? Would you tell Picasso to sell his guitars? Oh my God, he's an idiot. What's Dewey's problem here? A, he's late for work. B, he's sick. C, he doesn't have enough money. My name's Rosalie Mullins. Um, I'm the principal here at Horace Green Prep, and we're having a little emergency here. One of our teachers broke her leg on the way to school this morning, and all of our subs are already working. Pat Wickham at Milton Prep recommended I give Mr. Schneebly a call. Do you know if he's available? Um, how long is the gig? Excuse me? Uh, how long is the job? My guess is as much as a few weeks, but we do need somebody to start immediately. Mm-hmm. So how much are we talking here? We pay our substitutes six fifty a week. Now, do you know when Mr. Schneebly will be back? Hold on a sec. Oh, you know what? I think he's just coming in right now. Ned, phone! Hello, this is Ned Schneebly. Okay, Freddy, that was awesome. You're rocking, but it's a little sloppy Joe. What does sloppy mean? A, not done carefully. B, with style. C, done very well. Tighten up the screws, okay? Zach, dude. <laughs> What's up with the stiffness, man? You're looking a little robotronic. Okay, let's uh, grease up the hinges. And listen, loosey goosey, baby. Loosey goosey. I'm just playing it the way you told me. I know, and you know what? It's perfect. But the thing is, rock is about the passion, man. Where's the joy? You're the lead guitarist, and we are counting on you for some style, brother. If you count on someone, you A, make them feel better, B, depend on them, C, become friends with them. So try this out. This is an ancient technique. It's called power stance. That's it, power stance. You own the universe. Now give me an E chord, just go But let me hear Yeah, now raise your goblet of rock. It's a toast to those who rock. Now smile and nod your head and let me see your eyeballs wide like there's something wrong. Yeah! Yeah! Do it again. Give me that. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Okay, let's do it again from you're not hardcore. One, two, three. Well, you're not hardcore. Unless you live hardcore. And the letter of the wrench was way hardcore. Yeah! Now we're rocking. 
tell them this is a summons. A summons? For what? It looks like you ran a red light on Marengo Avenue at 9.30 p.m. on November 16th. They got you on a traffic camera. Nice picture. Oh, yeah. Let's learn English with the Big Bang Theory.